Good morning. We have already derived simple harmonic motion equations for a mass spring system and for a simple pendulum. Today we are going to derive the angular frequency and period of a physical pendulum using calculus. Calculus! Flippin' yep. physics! Bobby, what is the equation which is the condition for an object to be in simple harmonic motion? An object is in simple harmonic motion when the second derivative of position of the object with respect to time equals the negative of the square of the object's angular frequency times position. Correct, Bobby, thanks. Now, just to be absolutely clear, class, remind me, what is a simple pendulum? A simple pendulum is an idealized simple version of a pendulum, hence simple pendulum. Right. In a simple pendulum, the string has a small enough mass such that the mass of the string is negligible. And the pendulum bob is a point mass, meaning it has no shape and zero size. Also, there is no friction either with the medium or with the, the pendulum bob is moving through or between the string and whatever it is attached to at the very top. And the string of a simple pendulum is inextensible, meaning the length of the string cannot be increased. The, the length of the string will not change. Very nice. Today we are going to look at a physical pendulum. The only thing we are going to assume now about the pendulum in simple harmonic motion is that there is no friction and actually no string. In other words, a physical pendulum is a rigid body suspended at some point and it is swinging back and forth in simple harmonic motion. The rigid body could be any shape. Here I have animated a random blob as a rigid object, which is oscillating back and forth in simple harmonic motion. Lovely. Yep. You can see the point where the rigid body is fixed in place is the axis of rotation. I have also identified the center of mass of the rigid body so you can more easily see the object is oscillating in simple harmonic motion. Why is the center of mass of the rigid blob not at the center of the blob? Uh, the rigid body must not have a uniform mass density. Oh, right. Thanks. Why is the rigid body only swinging back and forth a little bit? We could see the simple harmonic motion better if the angle were larger. The simple harmonic motion equations for pendulums only work for... Small angles. Yeah, I, I, I forgot that. Thanks. Great. Now let's pause the oscillation and exaggerate the angle so we can better see the geometry of the situation. However, please still remember, as Bo pointed out, pendulums are only in simple harmonic motion at small angles. Again, a physical pendulum is a rigid body suspended at a single pivot point, the axis of rotation, which oscillates without friction. Therefore, there is a force of gravity acting on the center of mass of the rigid body, which causes a torque around the axis of rotation. Bobby, please determine the net torque about the axis of rotation and see where things go from there. Sure. The, the net torque on the rigid body about the axis of rotation equals, well, well, the only force causing a torque about the axis of rotation is the force of gravity acting down at the center of mass of the rigid body. Net torque also equals, well, it equals rotational inertia times angular acceleration, and it equals the derivative of angular momentum with respect to time. Which equation should I use, Mr. P? Let's use rotational inertia times angular acceleration. Okay. The torque caused by the force of gravity equals the magnitude of position vector r, or the distance from the axis of rotation to the center of mass, times the force of gravity, times the sine of the angle between the direction of r and the force of gravity. And that torque is negative because the direction of the torque is always opposite the direction of the angular displacement from equilibrium, regardless of whether the center of mass of the rigid body is to the left or to the right of equilibrium. Let's replace distance r with capital L sub cm for the length from the axis of rotation to the center of mass and replace force of gravity with mass times gravitational field strength. And we can leave sine theta there. But how is the angle between r, or the position vector, to the center of mass, and the force of gravity, how is, how is that angle theta? 
the R position vector is directed from the axis of rotation down along the string toward the center of mass, and the force of gravity is straight down. The angle between those two directions is the same angle theta as shown in the um, illustration. Okay, yeah. Thanks. Looking back at the equation condition for simple harmonic motion, we can see we need to replace angular acceleration with the second derivative of angular position with respect to time. We can rearrange that equation to get the second derivative of angular position with respect to time equals the negative of the quantity mass times gravitational field strength times the length to the center of mass, all divided by rotational inertia, all times the sine of the angle theta. And here is when we use the small angle approximation. For small angles, or angles less than roughly 15 degrees, sine of theta is approximately equal to theta when theta is in radians. Exactly, and you can see we now have an equation which, which fits the condition for simple harmonic motion. The second derivative of angular position as a function of time equals the negative of angular frequency times angular position. That means the square of angular frequency equals mass times gravitational field strength times length to the center of mass all divided by rotational inertia. And we can take the square root of that equation to solve for angular frequency. And previously we showed period equals 2 pi divided by angular frequency. We can substitute in what we got for angular frequency. We get that the period of a physical pendulum equals 2 pi times the square root of the quantity rotational inertia divided by the quantity mass times gravitational field strength times the length to the center of mass. <laughs> nice. Agreed. Very nice. Now, just for fun, let's see what happens if we use this equation for the period of a physical pendulum with a simple pendulum. Billy, what happens when we do that? Well, if it were a simple pendulum instead of a physical pendulum, then all the mass would be concentrated at the end of a string. The rotational inertia of a point mass about an axis of rotation equals the mass of the pendulum bob times the square of r, the distance from the axis of rotation to the center of mass of the point mass. We can substitute that equation for rotational inertia into the period of a physical pendulum equation. Mass cancels out of the equation. R, the distance from the axis of rotation to the center of mass of the pendulum bob is capital L, the length of the pendulum. Actually, the length to the center of mass of the pendulum is also capital L. One of the pendulum lengths cancels out, and we are left with the period of the simple pendulum equation, uh, which equals 2 pi times the square root of the quantity length of the simple pendulum over gravitational field strength. And we know that is the equation we derived previously for the period of a simple pendulum. <laughs> that is pretty cool. I completely agree, Billy. Thanks. Now, realize all the motion equations we solved for last time, which describe the simple harmonic motion of a simple pendulum, are also valid for a physical pendulum. It is just that the angular frequency has changed. Again, we have the same equations for the angular position, angular velocity, and angular acceleration of the pendulum. For a simple pendulum, angular frequency equals the square root of gravitational field strength over pendulum length, which is different than the angular frequency of a physical pendulum we just solved for. But again, while the angular frequencies, while the angular frequencies are different for a simple pendulum and a physical pendulum, the basic, equa basic equations of motion for simple harmonic motion are the same. Mr. P. Yes, Bo? Can we show that the physics works now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's do that. Actually, something is bothering me. May I ask a question first? Sure, Billy, but I, I feel like you just asked a question. Right. Yeah. Uh, way back in the problem when Bobby asked you if we should use the net torque equals rotational inertia times angular acceleration or the derivative of angular momentum with respect to time, you chose rotational inertia times angular acceleration. Why, why did you do that? I mean, if I were trying to derive this on my own, I, I would not know which one to choose. Okay, sure. The, the truth is you can solve this either way. If we use the net torque equals the derivative of angular momentum with respect to time, we can substitute rotational inertia times angular velocity in for the angular momentum of the rigid body. The rotational inertia of the body does not change as a function of time because it is a rigid body and does not change shape. 
so we can take rotational inertia out from the derivative. And the derivative of angular velocity with respect to time equals the second derivative of angular position with respect to time. That gets us to the same equation we had before in the derivation. The right-hand side of the equation again equals rotational inertia times the second derivative of angular position as a function of time. I think the way we did it before was a little bit easier, and it also avoids the issue of having capital L stand for both angular momentum and length, which is not good. <laughs> but the physics works either way. You choose to do the derivation. Yeah. That makes sense. Thanks. All right. Now, to show that the physics works, I have picked out an object we have already derived the rotational inertia of. We are going to use a uniform long, thin metal rod, which you can see I have set up such that it can rotate about one end. And we can set that physical pendulum into simple harmonic motion. To determine the period of the physical pendulum, we need the time for one cycle. Rather than measuring just one cycle, we are going to measure how long it takes for the pendulum to go through 10 cycles. And the time for 10 cycles works out to be 15.63 seconds. That means the observed period of this physical pendulum equals 1.563 seconds per cycle. Given that the mass of the uniform long thin rod is 0.667 kilograms and its length is 0.909 meters, well, please use all this information to determine the observed and accepted values for the rotational inertia of this physical pendulum. Sure. We already derived that the rotational inertia of a uniform long thin rod about one end equals one third times the mass of the rod times the length of the rod squared. That means the rotational inertia of the rod equals one-third times 0 0.667 times 0 0.909 squared, or 0 0.18371, or 0 0.184 kilograms times meters squared with three sig figs. Oh, hold up. We need to rearrange the period equation to solve for rotational inertia. Square both sides to get rid of the square root, and divide both sides by 4 pi squared, and we arrange the equation for rotational inertia. We get rotational inertia equals period squared times mass times gravitational field strength times length to the center of mass, all divided by the quantity 4 pi squared. We can now substitute in all the numbers. We get 1.563 squared times 0 0.667 times 9.81 times, uh, oh, half the length of the rod because the rod has uniform density and its center of mass is in the middle of the rod, so 0 0.909 divided by 2, and then all divided by 4 pi squared. That works out to be 0 0.18403 or 0 0.184 kilograms times meters squared. Very nice, Bo. And what is the percent difference between the observed and the accepted values? Okay, relative error equals observed value minus accepted value, all divided by accepted value times 100, or, whoa, both the observed and accepted values equal 0 0.184 kilogram meters squared. So we get 0% oh, yeah. relative error. 0% awesome. error. <laughs> The, the physics, physics works. The, the physics, physics works. works. Oh, 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 wait, oh, oh, wait a second. Oh, what? What? We should never round in the middle of a problem. We, we need to use the unrounded numbers for the observed and accepted values for the period of the physical pendulum. Yeah. Ow. Okay. Right. So it works out to be 0 0.17360 or 0.174% relative error with three sig figs. That's still pretty amazing, though. Yeah. The physics works. The physics works. Uh-huh, uh-huh. The physics works. The physics works. Uh-huh, uh-huh. The physics works. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you very much for learning with me today. Uh, I enjoyed learning with you. <laughs>